I asked uh, Michael Carter yesterday what the focus should be for the offense these final weeks and what they need to improve on. And, and he said just consistency. How can you guys accomplish that? Well, I, you know, I, I think you look at uh, your, your body of work from the previous game and, and we really look at it from a statistical standpoint and evaluation standpoint from the whole season just to see, you know, every week where it is you need to get better from a, an offensive standpoint. And then it becomes more specific when you plug it into things that they're doing well on defense. So I, I think we've got to continue to try to maintain consistency on third down and in the red zone. Um, and we have to be consistent on, on first down because Notre Dame does a really, really good job of getting you behind the chains and, uh, you know, they're elite on third down. And so that's, that's where they want to live. They want to live on third down with you. And so it's, it'll be a challenge on Saturday to stay out of it. And that kind of leads into my question about what have you seen out of Notre Dame on film? Um, this looks like probably one of the, the best defense you'll, you'll see all season. I, there's no question. I mean, they are, this will be the most physical unit we've seen. Um, you know, they're really, really good up front there. I think they're giving up about 80 yards a game rushing. Uh, Clemson, who we all know is very, very talented, rushed the ball for 34 yards with, in my opinion, one of the best running backs in the country. And um, so it's, it's going to be a challenge here to, uh, one, physically compete with, uh, you know, their front on the line of scrimmage. Uh, our guys are looking forward to it. I think uh, the second level, the linebackers, 33 and 40, uh, do a, a phenomenal job of defending the run game. They're really gap sound. They're not out of position. You know, they, they, they squeeze the box. Um, and six and 14 are elite tacklers. I mean, they're six and 14 are future NFL players. They split them. Very rarely we ever see 14 and six on the same side of the field. I wouldn't put them on the same side either. You know, both of them uh, basically, man, they're part of the jungle and, and they handle it very, very well. And they're great tacklers. And so they're going to try to spill everything to those two guys and, and, you know, let them clean up the run game. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Yes, sir. Okay, our next question comes from Melissa Ray. Yeah, Coach, what are the pros and cons of coming off a of bye week? Um, more time to prepare, obviously, but maybe not bring in that momentum if you were to have had a game this past weekend. You know, bye weeks are funny. If they, if, if they time up well, I love them. You know, if you've got somebody or some people that you want to heal up, then you love bye weeks because, you, you know, maybe you're a little bit healthier going into that game two weeks from now. Um, I, I am always uh, the concern, I guess, on the other end of it would be when you're playing good football and you're in a rhythm, you know, and I talked so much early on in the season, we went six weeks before we played the opener and then we went three weeks before we played game two and it was just so hard. Now it's harder in the beginning of the year, but it was so hard just to get into a rhythm and I would love to have played those first two games again now, you know, that we're kind of where we want to be offensively, but uh, I always worry about sometimes uh, just having too much time off. In this particular case, it's a little bit more unique because Notre Dame has two weeks off also. So we need the two weeks to get ready because they have two weeks to get ready. Um, and, you know, I think this time of the year, late in the year, we're, we'll obviously be healthier going into the Notre Dame game than we would have if we had played last Saturday. So it's been, it's been good for us. Thanks, Coach. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's go over to Andrew Jones. Hey coach, when players are gearing up for a game like this, obviously they get very excited. But as a coach, uh, what kind of drives you more? Is the excitement of the opportunity that you guys have or the intrigue in what your group might do against a defense like Notre Dame? You know, it, it really comes down to I, I hate to downplay any game, but I – Every game after you play it is either a win or a loss. You know what I mean? It has the same value. I think, I think when you have a, a team um, like Notre Dame, though, that is so good at what they do, and we work so hard to be good at what we do, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's exciting to prepare for and get ready for and try to compete against somebody that does what they do at such a high level. And so this is a, an opportunity for us to, to see if we can do it against – uh, right, what I think right now is going to probably be the most, uh, from top to bottom, the most uh, physical um, defense that we'll see this year, and you know, overall statistically, the best defense we'll see this year. So, 
it's it's uh you know that part of it is exciting i think um really we we've got to focus on north carolina this week and and do what we do and then we've got to be willing to bring it physically on 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 friday night Friday. going back to their run defense what element of your group's run blocking has improved the most since the opener uh I, we finished better you know we're always talking about finishing at uh I always evaluate. First thing I look at when I watch the film, uh, when I'm watching the old line, is just to to see how well we finish. And typically, when we have explosive runs, and we, you know, I, I always say when when the line when you block well enough to beat the line of scrimmage with the running backs, you know, you don't want to have to coach the running backs on that side of the field. You know, at that point, it becomes about their ability and their talent. But you can help explosives. You can help promote more explosives in the run game when you do a good job blocking at the second level. And that will be absolutely paramount against Notre Dame. Uh, of course, Notre Dame brings the second level to you. So we're going to see linebackers closer to the line of scrimmage in this game than we've seen all, all year. And, you know, that, that, that in itself will be more of a physical challenge for us than we've seen in, in recent weeks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our next question comes from Ross Martin. Uh, hey, Coach, um, I was wondering if you do get Bo Krause back, her he's practicing this week, how that kind of figures into changing your wide receiver rotation and how that impacts your offense in general. Well, first I would say, Ross, that Emory Simmons and uh, Chaffrey Brown have both established themselves as receivers in the, you know, in, in the system now, in the offense this year. So uh, whether it's whether it's uh, De'Ami Brown or Choffrey Brown or Emory Simmons, if Bo is back, now he is practicing. Um, he did a nice job yesterday. So if he is back and he's able to go, then, you know, we move him into the rotation and uh, we, we go through this normal same, the same normal four wide receiver rotation that we're used to. We've kind of had to, to have done, do without him in the, in the last four or five weeks. So if he's able to play, it'll be because he's able to play and, uh, we'll work him into the rotation like we did in the first half of the season. Great. And, and yesterday, um, Sam was asked about um, something that stood out about what he's done in the last couple of weeks. He mentioned that you came up to him and said that his fourth quarter numbers are like the best in college football or one of the best ever. What do you think makes Sam such a effective and dynamic player in the fourth quarter? Is it the it factor? Is it and what, what is it that you see from him that makes him so effective in the fourth? Truthfully, I, I, I think it's two things. I think um, poise has a lot to do with, you know, uh, uh, adverse scenarios in, in the game of football, you know. So when, when adversity is the highest, I think it's when Sam is able to maintain the same calm that he had in the m midway through the second quarter. I mean, he's just – he really doesn't change. And he's not a flappable kid. He doesn't get rattled. So that's one. And then the other thing is just, I think it's why any great quarterback is good in the fourth quarter. They're, they're, they're so dang competitive. They, they, they just, they can't accept losing. They can't accept not getting the first down. They can't accept not completing the pass. They can't accept not finishing the drive. And, you know, Sam is as competitive as any quarterback I've ever coached. Um, and I, I would say that about a number of our players. And I just think that lends to, to how competitive and, uh, how hard we play in the fourth quarter. And that has a lot to do with our fourth quarter production. Thank you. All right, uh, let's go over to CL Brown. Hi, right, Phil. Um, after the Wake Forest game, Mac told us that he talked some with Sam on um, the And I wanted to get your perspective on when all is said and done at Carolina for Sam, what do you think, how do you think his legacy will be written? So you're going to think I'm ducking this question, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not thinking about Sam Howell's legacy until he's done playing here. You know, I, it, it's, it's no different than approaching the season. What, I don't want to talk about the ACC championship game or the national championship game or um, being 11-0. Being and 0. I just want to talk about the next game. If you, if you take care of that day's practice and that week's practice and, and that game, then the season and the championships and the legacy and all that stuff – takes care of itself. So it, the word legacy and Sam Howell hasn't enter, entered my mind really. I just, I want to make sure he plays a good game on Saturday. And if he does that, it'll add to whatever y'all decide his legacy will be when he's finished. 
Okay. Well, that kind of submarine my follow question, but um, <laughs> so games like Notre Dame, games like a number two team coming in sure. generally go into constructing legacies. And you mentioned about his fourth quarter poise and everything. How is it, or why do you think Sam has been so kind of level headed in terms of like, in terms of something as how he approaches a big game like this and, and Clemson last year and as a freshman, um, where do you think that kind of fortitude comes from, from a player so young? You know, I, I think that's two things also. I think one, it's just, it's Sam's demeanor. You know, I, I've, I've coached other quarterbacks that would react to this game much differently. They reacted to adversity situations differently. Some of them were positive in their own right, but um, that's just how he is and who he is. And uh, he's that way 24 seven. You guys interview him, you talk to him, you know what his demeanor is like, and it doesn't really change when he's on the field. The second thing I would say is, you know, we always talk to our guys about, uh, we wanna be simple on offense and, if you're knowledgeable about what we're doing and you don't have to sit and think about what your job is and we, and things aren't overly intricate, you can play fast and you can play instinctive. And, you know, I, I think uh, Sam has an incredible grasp of our offense. He has an incredible grasp of what teams are doing defensively. He does a, an excellent job during the week. And in this case, during the last two weeks of mentally preparing for our opponent, in this case, Notre Dame. So really, my job ends on Friday. I mean, I just I just try to call a few plays and get out of the way on Saturday. The coaches, the staff's job is to prepare these guys Monday through Friday and then let them loose on Saturday. Now, in, in, in this case, I, we're, we're kicking off 3.30 on Friday. So we bumped everything back, and, and uh, I really need to have Sam ready to roll by Thursday evening. You know, and then I, I think a big part of – the knowledge that he has about what the defense is doing, about what we want to accomplish on offense, lends to him having great confidence. And when you play with confidence, you're able to play without thinking and you play fast. And I, I think you can play aggressive. And, and that's really, to me, the biggest, probably the two biggest reasons why Sam has been consistent and, and successful. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. All right, we'll close with Coach Longo with a final question from Greg Barnes. Good morning, Phil. I uh, was just hoping you could speak to uh, Kieran Johnson's contributions, not just in the Wake Forest game, but, but for this team uh, this season. Q has, um, you know, he, he's the epitome of the, the walk-on that, uh, you know, we all describe. When you talk to walk-ons, when you recruit walk-ons, when they come in, you know, they, they're all, it's explained to them all. They're not going to get the same opportunity that a scholarship athlete may get from a rep standpoint, especially in season, because you just don't have enough of them. And I think it's understood when you're a walk-on, you're, the odds of you breaking the lineup and getting into the mix is much more difficult than that of a scholarship player. And I think that's, that's true anywhere. So, you know, What's the dream for a walk-on to, to, to get on a roster, to get an opportunity? They're paying their own way, so they're doing it because they love it. And they get onto a roster and, and they make enough noise in practice. They do enough good things right at their position. They show that physically they belong. In Q's case, that's how he first got noticed. He was uh, very, very physical on inside run drills and one-on-one -on -one, uh, full contact drills. and. You know, we said at least, at the very least, um, Q may not fit the, 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 arm, the arm reach and the height and the, and, the, and the weight requirements and all that that you might recruit, but he, he was really, really good physically. So that, that got Coach Cyril's attention early on, and, of course, he brought it to our attention, and we all noticed Q. And so as things went on, and, you know, we went through some, um, some center issues this year. You know, we lost Ty Murray early on, and that gave Q – more reps and he he did a great job with those reps and so he has he's a a tip he is a a uh, a great example of a walk-on who has taken a very very small opportunity and done a lot with it and expanded his role on this team to the point where he was the starting center for a 59 point output last week 
in a game and and really saved our tail. And I, you know, we gave Sam Howell the Player of the Week, but I asked our staff if uh, if they had any objection to giving Q half of that award, and of course they didn't. And so Sam Howell and Q Johnson were the Players of the Week for us last week, and he you know, he just did a great job of earning it. And you did, he did what we hope all walk-ons would do when they when they finally get an opportunity, and that's that's produce. The best thing I I told you this last week. The best thing I can say about Q. The last three weeks uh, in practice and in the game is I never noticed an issue at center. You know, there weren't bad snaps and, and we weren't missing blocks or blowing protections or calls. I just never noticed them, which is an absolute compliment to a center because uh, those are guys you don't want to notice. So I can't say enough about the job he's done, just getting himself into the mix here and, and because of his performance in the last game.